The recent decision by the European Union to stop funding projects in the West Bank has come only a month after the decision to mark products which have been manufactured across the so-called Green Line. Will all these steps really hurt Israel financially or are those just publicity stunts by the Europeans to appease the Palestinians? We went to ask some of our experts what they think about the issue. For Alain Liel, who was the Director General of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, there's no doubt that if the EU boycott will be implemented, it will have disastrous effects on Israel. It has a huge effect on Israel, simply huge. If I try to compare it in the magnitude, uh, I can only compare it to the November 2012 UN Assembly resolution to recognize uh, Palestine as a state. And uh, because this is a decision dealing with the content of the negotiations. This is the, the, a decision that is reminding the Israelis and the world that there is a 1967 line and the main battle at this stage in the negotiations is if it will be based on 67 or not based on 67. And Europe says simply it should be based on 67. So it's huge. It's bigger than the labeling issue. Davidi Pearl is the mayor of Gush Etzion, which incorporates 20 settlements in what is known as Area C of the West Bank. It's a more of a publicity uh, act than uh, really affects us. And I think maybe it's much more dangerous to the world than the act about the uh, produce, uh, sign produce. Because uh, when you say something like this, in my view, you didn't learn the message from the Holocaust. You don't understand what we, uh, the anti-Semitism that is going around the world. At the end of the day, you pushing us to be uh, alone in the world and we have to stand uh, by ourselves and don't rely on the European uh, Union or other organization. Economist Dr. Ruby Nathanson of the think tank Macro agrees that the effect of the boycott on the Israeli economy is going to be negligible. The impact from the economic point of view on Israel is uh, very little, I would say. It is not so, such a big deal what is produced there. Most of the people living in those settlements, they work in the big metropolis anyway, in Jerusalem or in Tel Aviv area. So to say that these industries uh, in the occupied territories are not the main source of income of the people living there in any case. And from the, those products point of view, or producer's point of view, they have other alternatives and other markets as well. I mean, the proportion of the European market in Israeli export is getting down during the years. Alon Liel claims it's not a new thing that Europe feels they are the moral compass of the world. I think Europe sees it as a moral issue, as a human rights issue. I agree that Europe has uh, bigger problems today, but this is not something that popped up just now. The issue of uh, settlements, the issue of uh, what is described in the world as the Israeli occupation is uh, uh, an issue of five decades now, and things are being accumulated. Israel is a strong country. Uh, uh, Israel can respond, especially against some individual European countries. I don't think uh, uh, Europe is gaining financially from uh, such a decision. They might even lose from such a decision. So there is a moral standing here. And uh, uh, I think, I think uh, uh, the Palestinian lobby has a part in it, but it is walling without the Palestinian pressure already. There are enough countries in Europe that have it high on their own agenda. Dr. Ruby Nathanson admits talking morality is nice, but the real reasons for the European behavior lies in their financial interests in the Arab world. The Arab countries in general, they have a huge impact on European policies and big and uh, influential lobbies and also economic interests uh, of Europe uh, in Arab countries and vice versa. So uh, the Palestinian issue in that respect is from the uh, uh, European point of view, not only a question in principle, but also uh, has to do with uh, 
the interests of European countries uh, in good relations and economic cooperation with Arab countries. There is a big economic interest in dealing with the Palestinian issue, not uh, that they care about the situation of the people living in the West Bank, but they care much about their business in the Arab world, and the Palestinian issue is a sensitive issue which is part of the agenda in the Arab world. As the new EU regulations won't take effect until next year, there are still members of the Israeli diplomatic community who believe the ruling might still be reversed before it will start to be implemented. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson at Gush Etzion, the West Bank.